So I am David Garrison, quick intro. Uh, I work at National Grid, which is a utilities company in New York, New England, and the UK. Uh, I'm a data architect, which means I do a bunch of stuff with data. Dif dip a lot of different stuff depends on the day, but um, that's enough about me for now. Um, <clears throat> today, uh, I've got three things I want to go through in this talk. Um, firstly is an intro level look at generative AI under the hood from this lens of prompt engineering. And um, then I want to go through and keep these prompt fundamentals in mind as we talk through some of the uh, Cortex features and how those are distinguished by how they manage prompts. <clears throat> and then I'm going to torture myself by trying to do a talk and two live demos on stage. It's going to be great. Um, so firstly, what is prompt engineering? Um, uh, at the very basic level, it is building the stuff that you send at a generative AI. You put a big block of text together and send it off. The generative AI uh, produces output one word at a time that it thinks should statistically come next. <clears throat> For this talk, I'm going to uh, try to set up a little bit of at least internally consistent terminology. Uh, the terms around it get a little ambiguous, a little um, have some gray areas, but um, I want to at least set up some terms that we can use for this talk and have everybody on the same page. Uh, so what is a prompt? Uh, the very first thing that a lot of people think of as a prompt, uh, a lot of chat UIs will even call it a prompt, is the text box you see when you're, you're typing into a generative AI, chat GPT, um, looks like this. For this talk, we're going to call that user input. Uh, in particular, this is the part that uh, the app developer has no control over. The user can put whatever they want in there. So this is input, user input. <clears throat> and um, in this example, if you want to get email information, you're going to need to build a separate process that goes out and gets that email information. Uh, and this general architecture is referred to as RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generative AI. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have heard that term. We're not going to go deep into that. but um, another common example of this context is uh, previous messages from the conversation that you've been having. So that's how an AI can kind of seem like it is learning and remembering from your conversations. It's because that all that information is getting passed back into the AI every single time. And the last part of a prompt, at least for, for this conversation, is uh, instructions. So most, almost every AI application will have instructions running under the hood. Um, sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. But this is used to narrow the results of a generative AI, generally, uh, have it doing things like not spouting profanity, uh, give it extra business context, um, give it more detailed. This is the type of response you should be returning. And all of this gets bundled up and sent into, an, into the AI. And, and doing this bundling is um, an exercise in engineering. And that's what distinguishes a lot of these tools. Uh, and in this example, uh, you can see how this, I don't have a screen behind me. <laughs> uh, you can see how these different pieces get um, bundled together into a JSON, just as an example. Uh, but all the different pieces are even kind of scrambled in here. Uh, and that's because there's nothing technically special about the user input or the instructions. It all gets bundled together and sent off. So these. Distinctions are for convention. They're helpful for talking about. But it's good to keep in mind that when you're talking about a generative AI, generally it just all gets sent in there. And there will be some structure to it. But uh, it is all, uh, let me swap slides, sorry. So <clears throat> with those prompt fundamentals in mind, uh, I know I have to go through this real quick. But uh, I want to talk through how some of the different Cortex features use these prompts, how they treat them differently. So what is Cor Snowflake Cortex? Uh, well, my personal pet peeve is people referring to all of these different things as Cortex. They're all, these are all tools in Cortex. <clears throat> but um, as a quick review of just some of these, and I know this diagram is getting updated like today, so this is already out of date. But <clears throat> for, for these purposes, it's fine. Uh, so this bottom of the layer of the cake here, these models, um, that is, hold on. 
Uh, so that's the foundation of Cortex. It's the generative AI models and, and other types of models that, that all of these applications are built on top of. And um, you generally won't use a lot of these directly. The one way to use them directly is with these SQL functions, um, Cortex functions. And this is the uh, build your own prompt if you're using Cortex Complete. Um, and if it hallucinates or uh, doesn't give you what you want, that's because there's no guardrails. Um, <clears throat> but it allows you to build whatever you need. So if, if you need to build your own personal chatbot your, you know, with your particular instructions and needs, you can do that with these functions. And there's an assortment of other uh, functions here. There's you know, the sentiment, summarize, translate, all these other functions. Uh, and these use a range of generative AI with specialized instructions or uh, non-gen AI models. So this gives you kind of the most flexibility. Uh, moving up, uh, I wanted to call out Cortex Search as kind of a, a slightly oddball in, in this conversation. Uh, this is a tool that allows for fuzzy searching. Uh, for the data scientists in the room, this is using um, a vector embedding. Uh, but the reason that this is interesting and, and worth calling out here is because that fuzzy searching is very useful for building that context. If you have a table that has uh, a bunch of email data in a column, you can use a fuzzy search to go and get the ones that are relevant to what your user has asked for. So this, is, this goes back to that build your own generative AI. You can use that context. Um, Cortex search is also just useful for fuzzy searching, but that's what makes it notable in this collection of Gen AI tools. Um, and then uh, Cortex Analyst is a uh, dedicated, uh, a specialized uh, generative AI that produces SQL. Uh, and is built to avoid hallucinations. We're going to do a demo of that. So as we go through that, try to keep these different pieces of prompts in mind. The, you know, what is the input context instructions as we go through that. Uh, and then we'll do the same for document AI if we have time, should have time. Uh, and so this is a tool that, uh, that takes uh, images, PDFs, and translates those into structured data. Uh, and so again, we'll, we'll look at how this handles prompts, and hopefully that'll give them a, a little more of a uh, lens for thinking about how these tools work. So I'm going to try switching over to a demo, and it's going to go perfectly. Doing a live generative AI demo is always a little nerve wracking. All right. So <clears throat> uh, in here, in the, let me get the resolution set up. Okay. So in Snowflake, uh, there's these AI ML tools here. Uh, we're going to just dive right into the Cortex Analyst uh, Studio. And, and I'm going to just build this completely from scratch up here. Um, so I've got some tables that I prepared in advance. Uh, so I say completely from scratch, but you know, I, I did do some data cleaning and preparation before this. <clears throat> So when you start a new one of these, you get, there's a couple of options. We're going to use a fairly basic one, but um, this is demo. I've already used the demo. Got to get, tell it my warehouse. Great. <clears throat> so in here, you can just simply select a couple tables. I really just wanted, the reason I'm doing this up here is I want to show really how easy this is, <clears throat> at least to get started. So I know that I don't need all of these columns. I'm going to remove the ones that aren't you know, relevant. I, we're not talking about fuel type today. All right. So I hit create. This is going to build a uh, semantic model for me. You can see what this looks like under the hood. I'll come back to that. I need to do a couple quick house cleaning things. Uh, for some reason, it loves to put my zip codes into facts instead of dimensions. So two seconds. <clears throat> and I need to give it a relationship. Uh, zip mapping. Uh, you, you do still need to know your data, at least a little bit. No, no AI tool can take that completely away. All right. So I've got a uh, fairly simple. Uh, semantic model here with three tables. 
And I can go in here and now ask questions. You'll see it even says the word prompt there. We're, we're calling this user input for this demo. Uh, so this is a user can come in and ask any question they want. Um, <clears throat> so what counties have the most EV charging stations? We're going to see what that comes up with. Of course, doing a live demo, hopefully this produces what I expect it to. Uh, <clears throat> great, perfect. Uh, so we have a whole assortment of counties and how many charging stations we have. We can scroll down and see the query that it created for me um, and uh, did a pretty good job. However, I know that county names are not distinct. Uh, there are going to be um, some county names that are the same in multiple states. So I actually need to go in here and give it a little correction and tell it to include state in here. <clears throat> and say charging county. So now, uh, I meant to pull this up before, but uh, if I type this question again, what's uh, counties have the most charging stations? Uh, and this is, you know, generative AI, so if you type something a little off or have typos, it, it's all very robust to that. Um, but every time I'm typing this in, I'm sending in this user input, and then the application under the hood is sending in this entire block of, of YAML with all of my table information. Uh, of course, this all respects um, your RBAC system as well, so I'll, I'll only get information back on tables I actually have. But under the hood, this whole block of, of information is getting sent in. Uh, up to and including uh, that relationship uh, and that query that I just told it, it, like this is a correct good query. So it knows, knows, um, it has that extra information of when you're writing a query that uses a county, you should probably also include group by, or the, the state in the group by. And so even if I write a slightly different question about counties, it will generally uh, be able to include a state in the group by. And so you see in the results, um, th there's my, my county. <clears throat> uh, it now includes that, and it, it shows you that this is a verified query now. Um, and just because I have a few minutes, uh, just for fun, uh, what states have the most? Or um, <clears throat> uh, So if you've got more off-the-wall questions, again, a user can type whatever they want in here. Uh, it's pretty robust to writing intelligent queries and, and giving you, you know, the useful context that you need. Of course, it will tell you if you ask a question about the Olympics, it's just going to say, sorry, I don't know about that. But you can see New York needs more charging stations. Um, and you can see in here how it, it built a nice, pretty readable query. Uh, I do wish it, it was handling for divide by zeros in here, but again, I could go in and add that as a verified query if I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> so that's what I really wanted to show off for Cortex Analyst, just to, to be thinking about that. You know, you have your, your user input here, but under the hood, when a user is using this, if you're, they're using it for, through a, a Teams integration or something, there's still this context and instructions that are happening under the hood. And it's useful to, to just have that context in mind. So I have time for my document AI. And this is more of a show off than a, a proper demo. But <clears throat> so I can't do this one quite from scratch just because it takes a minute to, to upload the documents and, and create a new one. But I have one set up in here. Uh, when you first pull up a document AI project, uh, something went wrong. Great. Let's do a full refresh. Well, if we have to, to sack the document AI demo, give it one more try. OK, hey. <laughs> All right, live demos. So uh, when you get into a document AI project, uh, there's a, a few things that you can ultimately do. You can, uh, once you have a few documents that you've processed and gone through, you can uh, see the accuracy and, and correct any 
values that you give it and do, do training. We're not going to go that deep. We're just going to kind of look at the, the fundamentals of what's going on when a, one of these projects is running. So um, <clears throat> when you first upload a document, this is the UI that you get. Uh, it'll, it'll show you the document here in a little preview. It'll do an OCR scan on it. And you can hit this little box and just give this a name. It doesn't matter what this is. Statement, I can just spell it wrong, whatever. Uh, and I can say, what's the statement type? And it should say EAC. <coughs> so um, now this box here, I said that when you have a box like this, this is often user input. In this case, I want you to remember that the user input is the thing you don't have control over as an app designer, as an app developer. And in that case, the thing you don't have control over is the document. So really, this is the user input. When you deploy this and, and send this out to your users, they're going to be sending in documents, and they can send in whatever document they want. So that makes this the user input. Uh, if you have a, a service account that's automatically sending them in, you might actually start thinking of it as context. This is where it gets a little fuzzy. But uh, what does that make for you know, this is being real slow. This is, this is why I did it in advance here. <clears throat> Uh, so if this is not user input, then that makes it instructions. Uh, and <clears throat> if there's one takeaway for, for using Document AI, I want you to think of this as providing the model with instructions. So when you're typing this in here, you're saying, anytime somebody sends me a document, you are going to run through this list of instructions and produce output accordingly. Uh, and this application provides all that structure around it. So it kind of feels like you're just typing questions in. but at the end, you do deploy this, and you send this out, and, and it becomes baked into the model the, the, how these questions work. So in this example, I, I t ask it, and I'm going to adjust my, yeah, there we go. Hopefully, you can still read that all right. I gave it a release, you know, a, a question, ask it for tier 5. You'll see in here there isn't a tier 5, so it seems to have gone and grabbed the thing that comes after tier 4, which is kind of reasonable. Uh, but if you remember this as instructions, you have the opportunity here to provide that business context, tell it what it needs to know, tell it what it should expect. And so in this version right here, it's basically the same question, except that I come in and I'm putting quotes around it to make sure it's finding the right things and giving it this extra information of, hey, if it exists, and some files only have four, and return a blank if there's no five. So I can provide it with these extra instructions so that any documents that come through there, uh, it, it will... You know, and you can, these, these models can handle tons and tons of, of data. So there's no reason to not put that extra context in here. I used the word context there. <laughs> uh, extra instructions in here so that it uh, really can get uh, more accurate answers right off the bat. Of course, you can come in here and correct this and tell it, no, this should actually be no answer. And you can do training. So even with the simpler uh, instructions here, you can still get pretty good results. But why not put a little extra business context in here, business information, so that it can uh, generate the results you're looking for? <clears throat>